I'm David Lewis, the program manager for Behavioral Health Services. The power of a positive relationship is something that we all need and a necessity in life, and we've all had that person that's helped us get here. And what we're gonna do is view Willard Jimerson talk about that relationship that he had in his time in Seattle Public Schools. And afterwards, we will have some time for questions and a time to reflect. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you. Um, I want to thank the panel members, especially for taking time for this important conversation. Um, this whole panel afternoon sort of came to fruition um, within the past few weeks, thanks to um, Dr. Ford and Mr. Donaldson and Mr. Nagasa's efforts. Um, in recruiting our, our community members who are here with us this afternoon. About a year ago, um, I went to a school to prison pipeline talk at Garfield Elementary and, or, I'm sorry, Garfield High School. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a speaker there who's on his way who really hit home for me, um, Mr. Willard Jimerson. He's on his way. He was, uh, he's a Leshai alum. He um, went to school here. He was, he was one of our students. And at the age of 13, he became one of the youngest people in Washington State to be tried as an adult and <clears throat> sentenced as an adult where he, um, he spent 23 years in prison. A couple years ago, after he you know, got out, he started making um, an impact in the community, starting giving talks to teachers and to community members and um, some of the things he said really, really hit home. Not just because of where we are located in Seattle Public Schools, um, but as far as we have come, we still have so much work to do. And I really felt like his story represented that. Some of the things that really <coughs> stood out, he said, for working with um, young black students, be consistent, look at us all as individuals, don't strip off who, we, who I am. Um, to start off, you know, I'm from this community. Um, I grew up on Yesler. Uh, 2514 East Yesler Way was my address at one particular time. Um, and I, by, by do, I, I came to Leshy Elementary School. I started, um, I can remember my very first day. At the bottom, this school was different. It was before it was remodeled. Uh, it was 1986. I uh, probably don't look that old, huh? So I'm telling my age. Huh? It's 1986, and Mr. Robinson was the principal here. And my first elementary school teacher was an African American woman by the name of Miss Harris, and she was a beautiful woman. Um, she was about maybe four nine, but she was like six ten, you know, in in spirit and 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 her uh, her patience as well. But one of the one of the the, um, the key components of going to her classroom as well, I was probably like maybe her third or fourth generation of somebody coming out of my family. Uh, she had my my uncle, my auntie, a few of my other cousins that were older than me, and then she had me and then another cousin that was the same age as myself at the time. So growing up, I came here when they remodeled Les Shy, I ended up going to Decatur. Then I ended up coming back once the Les Shaw was remodeled. And what you guys pretty much have here the same, so we gotta do some work around here, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, I enjoyed it. This was my community. I really, I really love Les Shy. Uh, there was plenty of times I've, I should have been expelled and kicked out permanently, but um, there was some teachers who were patient with me. Um, at the time, she went by the name of um, Miss, Miss uh, Ross. Um, Francis Ross, and uh, they had placed me into special education because of behavioral management. You know, like I said, I should have been expelled on many numerous occasions, but I remember her telling me, I'm, you're not going to the office. I know you're used to getting kicked out the, the classroom and going to go sit in the office and things of that nature, but she was like, that's over with. I got you, and you're going to be here. That's it. <clears throat> and as a child processing that, I, could, I didn't have the words to articulate. I didn't have the experience, the background trajectory to, tr to truly understand the dynamic or the impact of those words. And really, I was dealing with a lot of different 
social and psychological, emotional issues that were outside of the institution of learning that I brought to school with me. And she didn't necessarily have the resources, but she said, I'm going to have the patience and I'm going to deal with you. And I'm going to share that space with you, regardless if you like that or not. I'm not going to give up on you. And I never really heard that. And, and when I did hear it, it was like, it wasn't real. People will say things and their actions will prove to, to do something contrary to what they said. But she stood fast. And I actually had her for like three years. And it was time for me to go back into the regular classrooms. And I was like, no, I didn't want to go. <laughs> I developed a relationship with her. And she actually stood fast. And because of that, my behavior started to change. It began to mature and manifest itself in a way that was good. But unfortunately, it happened when I was getting ready to exit out of the elementary school setting. So I didn't have <clears throat> that consistency, that continual um, love, support, and somebody who was willing to be there regardless of the situation. So I, was, I had to start over. And starting over, you... You don't carry too many skills with you when you're a young child. And I went back to the same type of model behavior. And early on, I found myself in some trouble, uh, experienced some juvenile time. And then uh, not too far away from here, I got in, caught in a situation where I was 13 and someone lost their life. I was tried as an adult and I was sentenced to 23 years. And out of that, I served 20 years from 13 to 33, six weeks after turning 13, right here in Seattle, right here in the state of Washington, right here from Leshy Elementary, right here from the Central District. Um, I've been released um, a little over two years now, and in that process of, of being incarcerated, I told myself that it's time to do something different. And I didn't know exactly what that different looked like. I didn't have a real tangible type of um, example to, to, to pull from or resources to pull from. So by default, which was a wonderful default, I read. And that language that was being presented to me helped to shape my mind, helped to shape my reality, it helped to shape my position and myself. And then when you're in there for 20 years, you go through a, little, a lot of different experiences and a lot of growing spurts. So in the first five or so years, I found myself still trying to hold on to a false understanding of what manhood and being tough, and I was in segregation. And But in the process of doing so, I was reading. And those authors were speaking to me, and I was having conversations with them, and I was like, where were you at, you know, when I needed you in, in, this, in this regard? And so one of my, I remember one of my friends telling me after, you know, going through a slew of different uh, range of motions of growing, I remember he said, it's time to put down the tech nine and pick up a, I'm put, put down the tech nine and pick up a technique, right? And, and I was thinking about that and I was like, the mentality that comes with that, I wanna make sure that when I put it down, I wanna make sure that someone who comes behind me doesn't pick it back up. So the first stage is kind of a little more self-preservation, you know, preserving yourself and kind of having an understanding about self. But then the other notion is the collective force, is making sure that my community is all right, it's okay. So that was one of the one things I wanted to do from the very onset, it was to get out here and to restore that, 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 that bond, that community love. Um, as we know, it, the, it, the community is not the same as I left it um, for various reasons. And, but we still have to work with what we have. And, and Les Shy Elementary School is very critical in that movement. And, and, I, and, and my thing is to urge you, because I am one of you, I am from you, regardless if you want to accept that portion or not, I am that portion that is still of you. So what we, you have a responsibility to these students in this, in, this, in this classroom. And my thing is don't start too late. I always tell people, especially with young people who are are most, you know, uh, uh, who can be shaped and formed and are still experiencing, are still exploring, we don't want to make the mistake of making a permanent decision on a premature personality. They're still growing. They're still developing. They have yet to even find themselves. And this is the process of why when you – I read a study uh, 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 some years ago that stated, especially when you're in your younger years, 
some people are wild and they're obnoxious and they're 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 just you know reactive. They don't think about their 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 actions and the consequences. But when they get older, they said that these become the best adults. And and I was thinking about that. I said, "Is that's kind of that's it?" Kind of sounds a little accurate because when I speak to older people, they always tell me about boy back in my time, you wouldn't believe it. You know the things I used to do, and 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 you look at them today, and you be like, I, I really couldn't, I really, and then they tell you certain stories, and so what happens is you end up balancing your life based upon these experiences. But us as adults now, and you guys in positions of authority, can help shape how they experiment, and making sure that process is a positive one, and being due diligent, because that's what I was looking for was consistency. The consistency that I had on another different spectrum was not somebody who was willing to stay in the, in, the, in the fight with me, willing to love me, willing to share that space with me, and willing to ignore my defaults and, and, and my imperfections in my own self. They were saying, I'm going to love you regardless. And, and Ms. Ross did that. And I stay in contact with her to this very day, right? And, and she did that. So she's even doing it even till now. And, and I just urge you guys to do the same. Don't be quick to judge. Just understand that these children are dealing with circumstances that they have no resources, no skills, no services, no understanding, not the mental or psychological capability to even how to deal with. They don't even understand. They're still, still barely a, a few years away from how to learn how to tie their shoes up, you know? So we have to be patient with that process and understand that these are jewels of the earth. So you, you got to be patient with that. And that's, that's my, 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 um, I guess, my gift to you guys right now.